Welcome to worship here at First United Methodist Church in Conway, Arkansas. Whether you're joining us from a coffee house in Conway or a corner in Connecticut, we are glad that you are here. This is the Easter season in the Christian church when we celebrate the resurrected Jesus Christ. And in our community, the way that we're going to do that is by looking at the letter of First John. It's going to invite us to reflect on what it means to love God and love neighbor and live that love out in the world. We start that series today. Pastor Michael will provide us with a good introduction to that in his sermon. We hope that it inspires you to go out and share the word of God yourself. One way you can do that is by sharing this worship service. We also hope it inspires you to live more fully as community. And so we invite you also to comment on this worship service and be part of our community that way as well. Following this welcome, we'll have a prayer and then we will hear from our sanctuary musicians that classic and wonderful Wesleyan hymn, Oh for a Thousand Tongues to Sing. It is one of the great ways that we invite people into worship. So join us in that singing. We are glad to have you with us. We rejoice at your presence. Welcome to worship. As we worship, let us join together in prayer. Holy God, we give you thanks for your life-giving presence. As we worship, move us from fear to faith, from self to community, and from finite perspectives to an eternal perspective rooted in your love. Be with all who are in need this day and during this time. Strengthen us to be instruments of your healing and grace. We pray in the name of our risen Savior and Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now bind us together with one heart as we pray the prayer of our Savior. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
and tongues employ. Ye blind, behold your Savior come, and leap ye lame for joy. I invite you to hear these words from the scriptures. 1 John chapter 1, verses 5 through chapter 2, verse 2. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not know what is true. But if we talk in the light as he himself is the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also the sins of the world. The word of the Lord. Have you ever noticed how much we love to catch someone else doing something wrong? It somehow makes us feel good about ourselves. Now, maybe you don't do this, but as a society, we are obsessed with finding fault uh, in others. And so, uh, I wonder if it ever feels like a disconnect somehow when we come to church, uh, online or in person, and hear something that is so different. As we explore the scriptures, we are continuously called uh, to break through this obsession with noticing the faults of others. And then we are called to look inside, to examine ourselves, to confess our own sin. Jesus, uh, for example, talks about this as looking at the speck in the eye of another while ignoring the board uh, in our own eye. We are called to look here, to look within our own hearts. A part of the hope of worship uh, is that God will move in our hearts. And when this happens, among the first things uh, that we experience uh, might be an awareness of our own sin. Very often, this is the first dimension of a real spiritual experience. We begin to recognize just how short we fall uh, compared to the love of God. Before this experience, uh, we either tend to ignore God altogether, or we might try to bring God down to our level so that we can think that God is on our side uh, and, and, and there to serve us. Friends, that may be the most popular religion in all the world. But then, often in worship, our spirits are opened to the majesty of God's life-giving life -giving love, and we are humbled to our knees, literally or symbolically, and we begin to want what is here. We begin to see it uh, and then ask ourselves, how do we get there? This letter that we call 1 John uh, it tells us how. For the next few weeks, uh, we're going to be looking at this letter. This letter is the, it, it's the letter that makes the bold claim that God is love. But this letter starts by calling us to acknowledge our own sinfulness. There is something critical about recognizing our own sin 
before we can truly know what love is and thus who God is. We're going to explore uh, this spiritual dynamic uh, some today. In this first chapter, we read, This is the message we have heard from Christ and proclaimed to you, that God is light, and in God there is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with God while we are walking in darkness, then we lie and we do not live in the truth. But if we walk in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, God's Son, cleanses us from our sin. John uses this image of light and darkness a lot. The light of Christ throughout John's writings, it, it does two things. First of all, this light exposes our sin. In this light, we begin to see who we really are. We see just how short we fall uh, as fear-ridden, self-focused beings. We see this, and often our first reaction, our initial reaction, is to run and hide. This is what Adam and Eve did, for example, after they became aware of good and evil. They were deeply afraid, uh, and they tried to hide from God. Friends, we are so good at trying to hide from God and trying to cover up uh, who we are. The light of Christ exposes this. We truly see how short we fall in this light. But then at the same time, we can see how great and how good God is. We might start uh, by deluding ourselves that we are somehow equal with God or that we can be our own God. But in the light of Christ, this happens. And we are able to see in this light who God truly is, not the capricious, mean, uh, condemning God that many proclaim, the God that we try to hide from, but we are able to see the cleansing, forgiving, loving, life-giving life -giving God uh, revealed in the light of Christ. And in this light, we want more. In this holy light, we learn that we do not have, we do not have to hide from God. We need not fear. God is love. God is committed to us. God will not forsake us or let us down. In this light, we are free uh, to be open and honest with God and deal with our own stuff. An analogy uh, might be a good marriage uh, or a, a deep friendship. When we know that the other person is there for us, committed to us, then and only then do we truly feel free uh, to be open and honest about who we are. If we don't know that the other is there for us in this unconditional way, then we tend to hide, uh, we tend to tiptoe around things and live in fear. The light of God is there to see us through this uh, and to truly uh, set us free. To get uh, to this love of God, we first have to acknowledge our sin. That's the big theological point that John is trying to make here uh, in this first chapter. So let's spend a little bit of time thinking about what sin is. We can think of sin at, at many levels. At the most kind of surface uh, or basic level, sin is actions that cause harm. But then at a deeper level, sin is uh, internal motivations, internal dispositions fueled uh, by the darkness in which we live. Through the years, the church has summarized these internal motivations or dispositions uh, into seven sins. Self-centeredness, 
anger, greed, lust, envy, gluttony, and sloth. This is a, a helpful list, uh, giving us a language uh, for what we need to deal with. But then John speaks of a sin that is perhaps uh, the sin that causes the most harm because it is the sin designed to keep us in the dark. We can call this sin self-righteousness where we delude ourselves into believing that sin is out there, not in here. John says, if we say that we have no sin, then we lie and we make a liar out of God. While thinking that we are righteous, uh, we might actually be living in darkness, in a lie. John wants to help us out of this darkness, out of this lie. John tells us uh, in this first chapter uh, uh, why he is writing this letter. He is writing this letter so that our joy might be complete. That's what God wants for us. But knowing this joy starts by us recognizing our own sin, not just their sins out there, but our own sins. This, this recognition is what makes us want to turn uh, to the one who can truly do something about it. In the first two verses of the second chapter, uh, we are told that that God, the God who is love, has given us an advocate, Jesus Christ, who is the expiation or the deep cleansing of our sin. And not only our sin, we are told, but the sin of the whole world. The devotional guide uh, and commentary uh, that we've put together for this series, uh, we hope that it will help you uh, learn more about some of these terms uh, and what they mean and how they, uh, how they speak to us. For now, uh, I want to end with this question. Can you imagine uh, a love this great? Uh, great enough to cleanse not only your own sin, but the sin of the whole world. Surrounded by this kind of love, there is no reason to hide. So come out into the light and let this light lead you into the love of God. That's where we're going in this series and on this journey. You are invited to come along. Amen. Let us join together in affirming our faith by using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, Suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Michael, thank you so much for those words of reflection, giving us a good frame to look at the letter of First John in that first sermon that you've done for us. Thank you. And this is going to be a, hopefully a very inspiring series. Uh, this letter of First John, it is brief, uh, but it can be deep and complex at times uh, as well. Uh, to help with that, we've put together a, a brief devotional commentary on 1 John uh, to help us to understand some of these more um, complicated parts of this letter. Uh, and then hopefully also to help us all hear uh, the inspired word of God uh, and live into the purpose 
uh, for which John wrote this letter, and that is so that our joy might be complete, so that we might be able to live in a life-giving, love-filled relationship with God. Yes, and it is wonderful to read the, the Bible in community with one another, mm -hmm. right? So if we can all read that together and think about it together, um, it helps us be in community a little bit better. Uh, which, speaking of community, we know our community has expanded over the course of a few months. We've had a lot of folks join us online, and then we've had some people that have started to come in person. We're excited about that. We want to make sure that, that you have a chance to really be integrated into this community. So we're starting a newcomers course. Uh, it starts Wednesday, April 21st, and we'll meet every Wednesday for seven weeks from 7 o'clock at night to 8.15. It will meet hybrid, which means that you can join us via Zoom or you can join us in person. So no matter where you're located, you can be part of this course. Um, and if you're ready to be in person with people and you're in the area, you can come uh, in person as well. So if you are interested in being part of that, um, whether you're a longtime member of this community and just want to reflect more on how to integrate into your discipleship here, or if you're new and you want to join us, send an email to mmorris at conwayfumc.org, uh, and I will get you plugged into that course. That is going to be such a good thing uh, to, build, uh, to build community with and for uh, one another. Friends, we now continue our worship uh, being inspired uh, by this song uh, from our praise band.
Friends, receive this blessing as we enter into this series and take this journey together. You are invited to read and to ponder and to pray, all with the hope of moving into the light of God's life-giving love. As you take these steps, know that the living Christ is with you and wants a relationship with you. Amen.